In this video, we're going to be looking at how to manipulate strings in Delphi. And this is part one of the video series. And we're going to be looking particularly at how to manipulate strings using some built-in functions that you find in Delphi. Now, before we get to that, let's have a look at what a string is. Now, first of all, a string in Delphi is some sort of text. It can have numbers in it, but it's considered text. Um, so we're going to be using like numbers, letters, and referring to that. So let's say we've got a string called S temp. It's not you can call your strings whatever you want. Uh, I tend to call mine something that's beginning with an S and then the name purely so that I know that we're referring to a string. So S temp. So it tells me that S tells me that it's a string. And there you can see I've made it equal to hello world. I've assigned it the value of hello world. So basically what Delphi does is it breaks that string into different blocks. And each block is its own character with its own ASCII value. So as you can see, in the position 1, we have the H for Hello World. And then position 2, the E, and so on and so on. So this st string takes up 11 places of text um, or of characters. So they're the different individual characters that we've got. So if I want to refer to just one of those characters, you can use square brackets after the name of the string and then the number that you put in that block will be the character that you're referring to. So if I refer to in this case S temp square bracket 5 that will return just the letter O. And if I say S temp square bracket S or 6 sorry that will return just the character the space. As you can see there's a space over there so although there's nothing in there you can't see anything it actually is a character it is a space. So let's just try that quickly. We've got a little program here. When I click on the button called Demo, I've got my string that's already got Hello World in it, been assigned to it. I'm simply going to use the Show Message, which takes in a string. And I'm so going to say S temp square bracket 5. And hopefully it will display just the O as a message that pops up. Let's have a look. So if I click on the button, there's just the O for the fifth character inside the, the string hello world so let's get stuck into these functions that we want to use to help us manipulate strings now just I'm going to use this hello world in s temp as my basis for my examples so there I've just put it there so you can see what a hello world looks like and where the position of each character is now remembering what functions do is they return some sort of value or result they will return one piece of information back to you so when you are using functions you normally use it in when you have a variable equals the function because that value needs to be returned into something or you use it in some sort of control that's going to be display something or something like that so remember a string function or functions any function doesn't get called just by itself it normally has something equal to it or something like that so let's have a look at our first one we're going to deal particularly with string functions now we call them string functions but the ones we're going to do handle strings but they're going to return an integer they're going to return a number so that's what we want we're going to give it a string and it's going to return a number and this is going to help us to manipulate strings later on so let's have a look at the first example the length function now the length function will return how long the string is so there we've got the format you can see there's an integer variable normally that is going to be assigned the value of the length where we have the name of the function and that in brackets is followed by the string that we want to find the length of so that will always return an integer value because you obviously as I said you can't have a a string with 5.3 characters it's going to have five characters or six characters we can't have a point third of a character so that's going to return how long that that set of text is so if we had to use it for example this in this case we have an integer called num, and we say it equals to the length of s temp then in this case s temp as you can see there has 11 characters so the result that will be returned to num will be 11 Let's try this in, in Delphi to see how it works. So here we have our program again with the demo button. We've got s temp equal to hello world. And now we've got a integer variable called r num. And r num we set to the length of s temp of that variable. And then I display it using a show message. Now the reason why I have to do this conversion is because as I as remember what we said, r num gets returned as an integer. 
and we can't display integers in show message we can only display strings so we need to convert it from an integer to a string so let's run it and see what it looks like when we press demo the answer is 11 and that is correct because hello world has 11 characters the next integer function that we're going to learn about is pos now pos as this is with all these functions returns an integer and in this case it's going to return an integer but it takes inside it two parameters both of them must be of type string so it's going to still return an integer value now what pos does is there's two strings now I've called the first string a substring because what it does is it takes whatever the first string is and it looks for its position inside the second string so it looks to see if this string is contained inside of that string and if it does it returns what is the position or the number that that string starts at so if I have this example let's say we've got our num equals the pos of w r r capital w o r inside of s temp it's going to look for that set of, of characters inside s temp and if we look there there we go there's a capital w o r and although it goes from seven to nine it starts at position seven so therefore our num will equal to seven because that's where it starts if we asked for a small w o r it would not find it because w capital uh, w and a small w are different string values they're different ascii values so therefore they're not the same if i asked for that it will return a zero because that is not contained anywhere in this string so yeah we've got pause and we're looking for the capital w o r inside of s temp we're looking for it inside there and whatever that result will be returned to our num and then we display our num so let's run it and see what it does it should be a seven and there we go it is a seven now if let's test that theory about it the capital w and the small w being the same if i make that a small w you see it doesn't look the same they're completely different um, ascii values for those two characters so it should not be considered the same thing so if i run it although it seems like it's got the same thing if i say demo it's going to return a zero because that string is contained nowhere inside of that string so there you've got the functions that return integers we've got length which returns how long a string is and then pause which takes in two strings and it looks for where the first string is contained inside the second string and returns the position where it is in that string the next functions that we're going to deal with we're going to still use this s temp equal hello world but the next set of string functions that we're going to deal with don't return integers but they return another string and the first one that we are going to look at is the copy and this is quite a nice one and you use it quite often to extract parts of the string that you want and you copy it and you put it into another variable so the normal format is we take a normal string variable and it equals to copy now copy takes in three parameters now listen carefully to how they work the first parameter is a string parameter and that is the string that you want to copy from then we've got these two numbers and people often get mixed up with what these numbers mean the first number is where do you want to start copying what position do you want to start copying so if i say a one it will start copying from there if I say copy from position 5 it'll start copying from there including that character the next one now don't get confused it's not from this one to this one that's not what it's saying the, fir the first integer is where we start copying the second integer is how many characters you want to copy so if I say I want to copy from position 3 for four characters it's not saying from three to the fourth character it's saying copy from position three for four characters so it'll be three four five six because that is four characters from position three so there's an example so copy from s temp starting at position three for five characters will be starting at the l over there and there'll be another l the o a space and the W is at one, two, three, four, five characters. If I have this scenario where we copy from position five for three characters, that means we'll start at position five, copy for three characters, so it'll be the five, the space, 
and then the 7. And then if I put something absurd like that, let's say we copy from position 9 for a thousand characters. Well, you'll see we can only go up until 11, but it won't give an error. It will simply copy what it can. So it'll just copy the 9, the 10, and the 11 and stop right there. So here we have that example. We're going to take s temp. I've created another variable of type of string, which is s word, and s word is going to equal copy from the s temp variable from position three for five characters. It's going to take that result and return it to s word. It's not going to change s temp. It's just going to take the result and put it into s word, and then we just show what s word is going to look like. So if we run it. There you can see it's L L O space W. Those are the five characters starting at position three. So if I wanted to extract it just for example the first five letters, so I can just get the low part. I can say copy from position one for five characters. So I'll copy from there for five characters and just have the word hello. So if I run that, that'll say just the word hello. And if I wanted to get just the part that says world, well that's starting at position. 6 there's 7 so that's the seventh character so we start at position 7 and we're going to copy for 1 2 3 4 5 characters as well so start at position 7 copy for 5 characters and there we have the world or just the world there's no other the last function that we're going to learn today that also returns a string is quite easy. There are two versions of it. We can do both versions quite quickly. And that is the uppercase and lowercase functions. And it's very simple. They just take in a string and whatever the text is, it'll change it all to uppercase. Whether it's uppercase already or not, or whether it's all lowercase, it doesn't matter. Every single letter will be changed to uppercase. So, for example, we're going to have a string variable is equal or assign the value of uppercase, and then in brackets we put the string that we want to convert. So, if you have something like this, then every single letter inside this string will be uppercase. In, in other words, capital H, capital E, capital L, capital L O, and so on. The lowercase works exactly the same way, except for it converts every character into its lowercase version. So, it works exactly the same like uppercase, and it would give the same result except for it would be a small h and then all of this would be exactly the same and that would be a small w. So yeah, we're going to test it out. We've got our s temp. We've got our s word is going to equal to uppercase of s temp. We're not going to change s temp. We're simply taking whatever s temp is, converting it to uppercase and storing that in a brand new variable. That's how functions work. So if I run it, there you can see hello world all in uppercase. And if I change that word upper to a lower, then you'll see that all the text will be in lowercase now. There we go. So just to recap the functions that return strings, we've got copy. So a string ver it returns a string. So the string variable is equal to copy. Then it takes in the string that you want to copy from. Then the first number is where you want to start copying, what's the position where you want to start copying. The second integer is how many characters you want to copy. And then the last string function that we learned was the uppercase and the lowercase, which just simply takes a string as parameter and stores the result in a new string in either uppercase form or lowercase, in capitals or small letters. In our next video, in this video series, we'll be looking at string procedures. You can go find that at our YouTube channel. There's the address over there. You can find us on Facebook or on Twitter. Follow us. We'd love to hear your comments. Also, you can find out whenever we upload new videos. And you can go to our website, particularly for RT videos. There, it's mrlongrt.wix.com slash mrlongrt. It looks something like this. If I get to it, there we go. It looks something like that. We're hopefully going to have lots of videos for all grades there. So go have a look. Hopefully you can find something interesting. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.